back in the kitchen with Marilyn and gloves. Jazz hands! Woo! <laughs> Mrs. Patmore always does this. Anyway, um, <laughs> we're going to touch meat, and at home, you know, you wash your hands before, you wash your hands yes, after. Yes, you do. And I'm a crazy professional home economist, and I'm all yeah. about food safety, so I'm going to wear the gloves, okay? I'm happy you don't make us wear the hair nuts. <laughs> Because, oh no, There's an I idea. shouldn't have no, I'm said it. Okay, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, so the star of any Downton dinner is roast beef. Mm -hmm. And it's got to be prime rib. And you know what? I don't like reinventing the wheel. Yeah. So I go to beefinfo.com. It's, uh, it's basically Canadian beef growers, and they hire professional home economists, and oh. they tell you how to do everything. Good. So I'm stealing their idea with permission because it's the best method I know of, okay? Okay, good. So the first thing is that you always roast in a shallow roasting pan, and you don't put any water, and it's always on a rack, okay? Right. Um, and with a prime rib, you're always going to have the bone down, okay? Now okay. that's going to take about two hours maybe to get to medium rare. Mm -hmm. And here's what you need. If you don't have a thermometer, it's not going to work because it, you got to cook by internal temperature. Don't yeah. be doing this stabbing thing. That's just stupid. You don't know. It no. doesn't tell you anything. No. Maybe a chef knows, but you're not a chef. Don't even pretend. Yeah. So anyway, um, and then the trick is to take it out before it reaches your desired doneness because okay. while it has time out, yeah. while you're making your Yorkshire, your Yorkshire pudding, right. uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to raise up in the temperature. So without this thermometer, mm. you're just it's going to be toast. a disaster your toast all right so um you're going to season it a little bit so i like this little it's like a little uh, thing that i have it's this is a thing i don't know a menopausal whatever <laughs> anyway um and i put the seasonings on there and then i just pat it in and then i just turn it over and then it's patted in and that's the end of it and then you stick it in the oven at 450 degrees to oven sear it and this is the big thing that okay. canada beef came up with and so you're going to sear it now this flopped over in my oven this morning yeah but you know, because it was a little too small you to want it show to stay and tell. Standing up the whole time. Yeah, you do, and so that that's like that's sad. Anyway, so you seared it for four. I touched it for 450 degrees for 10 minutes. I don't have your thingy. It's okay. I've got a cloth. Okay. Uh, for 10, spilling in aisle three for 10 <laughs> minutes, and then you reduce the heat to 275. Okay. And you do it until you get the desired temperature. Okay, all right. So I want to talk a little bit about the seasonings because you know, as a West Indian girl, yes, that ain't enough. Okay, so can if, you can you go to town? Can you go to town, or is the whole thing to, to have it less seasoned? No, you can do anything you want. Okay, all right. The, the biggest thing that you have to follow the directions for is time, Got and that it. is the temperature the and, and time. The you. rest is up to you. All I right. think that if you buy a really good piece of meat, you don't have to do that. Yeah. And and I and, and for a Downton dinner, I, I want it to just taste like red meat. You know. Okay. You want it to be meaty. I want it to be meaty. Okay. okay. So while well, that's uh, having okay. a time out, so when it comes out of the oven, so this is the seared version. Uh -huh. So when it comes. So let's pretend it's all cooked now. Okay. Um, you, you would tent it with some tin foil, and then you're going to go make your, your, oh, here, this is my dinner bell. Oh, hello. Time to eat. Where's the waiters? Yeah, my husband and my son played uh, the butler and the footman. It was so much fun <laughs> I going, know they did. honey, break. No, I was like, I was pretending I had an English accent. Anyway, <laughs> all right. I, ha I do the worst accents, I bet they too. loved doing that for you, huh? Oh, you know what? They re they were so sweet, and they cleaned up my house, too. So They're I'm going to, for $1,000, you could actually book them, and they'll come to your house. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Oh, it's very funny. Okay. You know, I didn't even know he had that suit. And when he put it on, I went, where did you get that? Anyway. But he's an actor, so he, he was having fun. Anyway. Okay, so this is my granny's Yorkshire pudding. It's okay. Yorkshire pudding. All right. And um, before I got, I went to Vancouver to visit my mom and dad because, well, just because. And, mm -hmm. but I couldn't, yeah, because I was looking for my granny's recipe. No, anyway. <laughs> but I found my grand's recipe for Yorkshire pudding, and it really is genius. So it's four eggs. And uh, then you, you, you beat them first, and then you add milk. And it can't be okay. skim, because they didn't use skim milk back there. So it's 1% or 2. And maybe you want a little bit of flavor, too. I think it's so nice that you can, you can keep history and tradition going through food. I think it's the most beautiful tribute. You am I stealing the words right out of your yeah, mouth? This is it's a the whole... most beautiful tribute you can you can give to, you know, previous I generations. I agree with you because if it's you don't do thing. it, you lose your you heritage. You lose it. You and lose then it. and then there's nothing, right? Yeah. So every time I make something my granny did, I remember her because yeah. she was wonderful. No, it's so a beautiful thing. It is a beautiful thing. So there's salt and then the flour. It's white. Come on, you can't use whole wheat flour. I use it all the time. I would never do that. Yeah. That. Okay. Stupid. Well, if you say so. But here's here's the trick: is that you beat it up and then you let it sit. And it has to come to room temperature because mm -hmm. when you put these in the oven, if it's cold, they're going to be like hockey pucks. And you want it that soft, flaky? You want them to be these lovely, puffy, mm. airy Yorkshire puddings. Yes. And that only happens if this has been beaten really well because you want to develop the gluten. Okay. And then you want to put them in a pan that has a little bit of oil in the bottom. Yeah. You heat the pan up in the oven until okay. it's smoking hot. And then you pour your batter in, put them in the oven. 
10 minutes at 450 and 30 That's to 40 it. at 350. Okay, got and it. And don't open the oven during the first 10 minutes or they'll be they'll be crap. Anyway, okay, okay You're good. You're just going to ruin everything. You'll ruin everything. So just so. let it sit. Look through the little hole. You can look through you and see what's call happening. Don't oven open light. it. That's right. All right. That's right. And okay, if you want so the whole story, go to, go to you, come to me, and it's a great. Go I got to pictures. Go to CNN.ca. We'll yeah. send you to, to, to uh, Maryland. And they just rise like that? They do. That's and then cool. And they stay like that, too. I made those yesterday. That's very cool. Light like air.